Welcome to our third workshop um, on VC Editor. Uh, my name is Dot Porter. I am the Curator of Digital Research Services at the Kiss Life Center for Special Collections, Rare Books and Manuscripts in the University of Pennsylvania Libraries. Uh, I split my time between the Kiss Life Center and the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies, which is a research and development group um, that is in the Kiss Life Center. And we do a lot of work with manuscripts, both physical and digital, which frankly is one of the great things about the job is that I get to work with the physical collections. Um, if you were here for the previous two manuscripts, you know that we actually had a manuscript here and we looked very closely at as it as we were doing the work um, today and next week we actually won't there's no manuscript with me here today because we're not going to be working with it now we're turning sort of totally digital. Uh, but the purpose is to bring more of the manuscript into this virtual space. So today we're going to be looking at um, image files, um, ingesting image files into VC Editor and linking them with, um, with the sides of leaves basically in, in the projects. So um, today we are going to be looking at different ways to get images um, and then how to, how to import them and that. A um, couple more things I should say before we get started. Welcome to those of you who just who just joined. Um, uh, so VC Editor is a piece of software that was developed as part of the VizCall project, VizCall being visualizing collation. Um, VizCall was a project that I started um, when I came to Penn uh, almost nine years ago. And um, my co-director on the project is Alberto Campagnolo, who is trained as a a digital humanist and a manuscripts uh, conservator. So he brought a lot of his sort of conservation knowledge along um, for this. Um, our programming is done primarily by um, Patrick Perkins, who is one of our um, cultural heritage developers. And we also work really closely with Doug Emery, who is the head of cultural computing here at the Penn Libraries. Um, VC Editor was actually um, based on a piece of software called Viz Codex, which was developed um, at the University of Toronto by the Old Books New Science Group uh, under the directorship of Alexander Gillespie. Um, so they first built this great interface that we see, and um, we then <laughs> they gave us permission to take it and um, sort of build on it and change some things on the back end. And so it's been a really great collaborative. Uh, collaborative project up till now. Um, so let's go ahead and turn here. So I've got this open already. So this is one of the projects that we were working on. Actually, I'm going to close this. We'll, we'll do this one next. You can see I have a whole bunch here. The, the manuscript that we have been working with um, for the past two workshops is um, shelf mark LJS 101. This is a, a Carol Engine manuscript. It's a I've been told that it's the oldest codex manuscript in Philadelphia, which is pretty cool. Um, part of it was um, written in the 11th century. You can see here, um, one of the things that we did last week is we created lists of terms and linked them. So now you can see all of the contents and everything happening here. We have 11th century sections and 9th century sections. And then again, towards the end, we have yeah, 11th century. So it's basically, uh, it's like a sandwich manuscript. You have this 9th century section in the end and then the 11th century on either side. Um, and then uh, one of the things we looked at here and one of the reasons that we have two different models for this uh, manuscript um, is because it's got a little bit out of order over time. It's been, you know, it's been what 1200 years um, since it was since it was created so a lot has happened and so um, we were able to virtually reconstruct it um, so we want to actually see what's on each of these pages so we're going to move over here we've looked at collation which is building the diagram we've looked at taxonomies which is making these lists of terms and linking them and now we're going to go to images so when you go into the images section, each, um, each project has its own images section like this. And you can see that there are ways to add new images. 
You can upload images, you can import uh, from a manifest, and we'll be doing both of them. And then when they, we, once they're imported, they show up here. And then once you have images, you can move over here and map them. But there's not a lot you can do here because we don't have any images. So let's get some images. All right, so LJS 101 is, this is what it looks like here. And this is um, our it, interface for the Bibliophily project, Bibliotheca Philadelphiensis. So it's kind of a user-friendly um, interface and you can actually download images from this interface, but you can only download them one at a time. So that's a little bit, that's not actually something we wanna do. Um, LJS 101 is also the data, the sort of raw data that is all of the image files and um, the description itself in a TEI format are available on our site called Open, um, which is great. And we will, will actually be using Open today to access image files, but not for LJS 101 because uh, the, the pen manuscripts, that is manuscripts that we own, um, as opposed to manuscripts that other people own that were digitized as part of the Bibliophily project. I should say a little bit more about that so you have back background for what we're going to be looking at. So in 2016, we got a grant from um, we being um, a group of institutions at Penn, uh, got a grant from the Council on Library and Information Resources to digitize manuscripts in Philadelphia. And we ended up digitizing 475 codices from 14 institutions. And that doesn't include Penn's manuscripts because we had already digitized ours. So we have a few hundred others that are, are in addition to that. And they're all made available through this uh, bibliophily interface. But the manuscripts the pen owns, so our Schoenberg collection and our, um, we call it the MedRen collection, our general medieval and Renaissance collection, are also available in our digital repository um, that we've just set up in the last couple of years. It's called Calenda. And here is the Calenda record for LJS 101. And you can see the digital images down here. The thing that uh, Calenda does that um, Open doesn't do is provides IIIF, um, IIIF support. So if you've been around, you've probably heard of IIIF, the International Image Interoperability Framework. Uh, essentially, it it makes it easier to access and use um, images of really anything, but, but it's really taken off um, recently for digitized manuscripts. Um, and so you can, whereas you'll see when we're at working with open, it's great because all of the images are there and you can take them, but it takes a little bit of work. Well, whereas with triple IF, uh, it's pretty easy. So how easy is it? Well, here's a, the manifest. So if I click on that, it will actually open it in the browser. It's a file format called JSON. Doesn't really matter. It's a text file in a particular specific format. But what I'm, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that, copy the manifest link. So I just copied that URL and then I'm gonna come back, oop, come back to here. And it asks for the manifest URL and I'm just gonna paste that and now I can add it. So I say add and it, it'll think for, it'll, it'll take a little bit for it to um, think. And then you can see here's my, under image collections, it will create a new one. And now we see um, the manifest here and we can see the image files here. If I click on one, it will open it up in, um, in our image viewer. Uh, hold on, let me. See, I'm enabling live transcription. I just realized that's nice for you and it's also nice for me to have later. Um, okay, so, and then the image opens up and you can see there it is. It does take a moment when you, when you click on the image because what it's doing, it didn't actually upload the image files into VC editor. The image files are still in a server somewhere and they're being served to us through this triple IF API. But that's fine, we can use them. Um, and so we go to map images. And now, although it doesn't look like it, if I click on this, 
you can say, there's the manifest that I just uploaded. One of the really nice things about using IIIF manifests in VC Editor is that it brings along the information um, in, in the manifest with it. So you'll see when we upload the image files, if we, if we have image files on the computer and we upload them into VC Editor, what we see here is the name of the image file, which may not actually tell us anything. And in the case of open, it does not actually tell us anything. But if you're bringing it in from a manifest, you can see the information that's associated with it in that file. And in this case, we have um, folio numbers. So this is great. So you can see, oh, here's one recto and here's one recto. So all I got to do is grab all of my um, leaves that I have in my project. So one through 64 and I hit shift and then click and I've selected all of them and I'm going to move to mapping and then I'm gonna come over here. And because we took, we took photos of the covers and the fly leaves, we don't actually need those. So we're gonna just say here, okay, we've got one recto and again, come all the way down to 64, it's even the same number, this is great. So I've selected that and I'm gonna to move to mapping. And as, as soon as you have the same number of entries on the left and on the right, you will get the submit mapping button will turn blue, which means you're good to go. If you upload all your leaves and then you upload what you think are all the images and that box does not turn blue, it means you have an uneven number and something is happening. Um, this can happen um, and we'll probably we'll see it. I'll make it happen a little bit later. Uh, for example, if you have leaves in your um, in that are part of your diagram that are missing, that is we say there was a leaf there, um, the leaf is no longer there, but we have a leaf, we just say that it's missing leaf. Um, if you include that in your list of, of leaves here, there's no, there's no image to go with that, right? So you have to make sure to leave all of the missing, missing leaves out. So you're not trying to do that. So it, the system will sort of help you keep that straight. So we're gonna submit mapping and you get this green thing that says submitted and it's good. And then when we come back to the collation, if I click on a leaf, it'll you can see now, here's the image, recto verso. Okay, Innocent has a great question. What if, what happens if a triple IF has more than one image for a folio? Um, the example is sometimes the BAV gives multiple images, e.g. when there are UV lighting used for some leaves. So, uh, VC editor doesn't have a way to deal with multiple images for one um, for one leaf. You would have to pick one, um, and yeah, you'd have to. You at this point, you would have to. You'd have to pick one. Um, this isn't something I've thought about before, but it would be neat to be able to include that kind of thing. But for now, you just it's sort of your editorial responsibility to to pick one. Um, but now we have this, and, and as before, if you click on it, it will it'll come up, and then you can see the front and back. Um, one thing that we're actively working on right now is to show, um, to be able to show the bifolia, uh, which is something that our earlier versions of um, VizCall software was able to do. Uh, VC editor doesn't do it, but we are working on it, and I hope to get that up in the next month or so. Um, you can a little bit later. I'll I'll show you an HTML export, and you can see the bifolia. That is, if you have you know these two leaves are physically attached, um, and and how do you see those two um, the, the images side by side? We don't do it yet, but we'll do that. Okay, so that is the most simple example of um, linking up images using the uh, using a manifest. Okay, so we'll come out and I thought what I would do is we'll also do the reconstruction 
because this is sort of fun. It's the same manuscript, but the, um, the leaves have been rearranged a little bit. So here uh, in the one that we just looked at, it starts with um, a choir of four, which is, it's not tagged here, but this is um, 11th century. And then it has two choirs of four that are ninth century. Originally, that was one choir of eight. And so this is how we've reconstructed it. And you can see in the folio numbering there. I'm looking in the chat. Can you do the image mapping in chunks if there are issues with image sequence? Uh, yes, you can. And we'll, I'll actually be showing you an example of, of chunking, not, um, well, it is, it is issues with image sequence, but yes, you can do them one at a time. You can also move the images. Once you have them up there, you can move them up and down and I'll show you, I'll show you how that, how that works. Um, we also rearranged here the last choir, which was originally here, a choir of 12. Now it's two choirs and it took a little work to figure out how they fit together, but now we know, which is pretty neat. So what I wanna do here, so this one doesn't have any images. Uh, what I'm going to do for this one, instead of using the, um, the manifest, which is really the easier way, I'm going to use uh, open. So what I'm going to do, uh, a lot of, so it's great if the manuscripts you're working with have IIIF images, that's great. Um, otherwise, you're going to be working from images either that you already have on your computer or you're going to be downloading them. So this isn't really a workshop on how to batch download image files, but it's kind of a good thing to know. So I'm going to cover it very briefly here. In uh, Firefox and Chrome, there is this amazing plugin called Down the Mall. And so Down the Mall, it's sort of exactly what it sounds like. It's a way to take, um, it basically finds links in your web page and then downloads the files behind the links. And you can, you can give it parameters to tell it how to do that. And I'm gonna try now to remember exactly how that works. So we're gonna open down the mall and it opens this, oh. So now you should be able to see this um, down the mall. And if you look here, this is all of the links in that page. Oh, and it's already finding them. So you see it's finding all of the web, all of the web JPEGs. So open, has, has links to a high resolution TIFF and a little tiny thumbnail, and then a nice kind of good sized uh, web JPEG. They're 1800 pixels on the long edge. So they're pretty good size just to be in a website. So those are the ones that we use. Um, it knows to look for those because when I was working with this earlier, I created a filter that said, look for all of the links that have underscore web in them. And so underscore web, underscore web, it's going to find all of those. Um, this is not the Collins hours, though. This is LJS 101. So I say LJS 101. This is going to create a subfolder in my downloads folder for LJS 101. By the time we're done, I'm going to have a whole bunch of these. So I want to keep them straight. Um, mask, this just means how am I going to name the files? And I'm just keeping the name the same. I said earlier, one of the nice things about using a manifest is that it brings the information along with it. So you know what, you know, you know that one recto is one recto because it says a one recto. Well, these just have these sort of random file names. And so it's going to be our responsibility to figure out where the pages start and end, how we're going to upload that. So I'm going to say download. It's real quick. And now in my downloads folder, It's hiding. It was hiding for me. I put it there. So I, there we go. So there's um, so there's a download folder, and you can see it was empty before. Now there's this LJS 101 folder, and it's got all of these image files in it um, that I just downloaded. So that's great. So now what I'm going to do is I got to do a couple of things. Um, I'm going to upload them. And you could do it. You could sort of do it either way. You can either say, I'm only going to upload the images that I know are associated with these leaves, or you can upload all of them and then figure it out. Let's, I've done it both ways. Let's say I will only upload the images. Oop, Widener, not yet. Um, I want to upload the images that 
are associated with leaves. So I'm back here in open and I can see folio one recto is, is image number six. So this zero, 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 six. So I'm gonna start with zero, 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 six. And then the last one is going to be 64 verso. There we go, 64 verso is one, three, three. So I'm going to go six through 133. Got to remember that, six through 133. So now I'm doing to upload images. So I'm going to browse to my downloads folder and say six through 133 and we'll upload. And this will, it's at, in this case now, it's actually uploading the files. So the files that we're going to be looking at are actually going to be stored in VC editor, as opposed to the manifest files that are going to be sort of coming from the wh wherever the IIIF server is. So here's our images, but they look the same. There we are. Oop. Uh, and now we're going to map them. So we'll do the same thing here. We're going to go one through. Oh, that's. Oh, yes. Yes. Right. Because I added, because I added. Um, these, um, I'll go back so you can, so you can see this. I forgot I did this. So one of the things that we did in the reconstruction, um, is I'll, I'll answer your question in a sec, in a sense. Uh, one of the things that I did in the reconstruction is there are a couple, there are actually a couple of places where there are whole choirs that are missing. And so in this reconstruction, I have said, here's where there are whole choirs that are missing. Um, and it's, if we look here, every leaf, whether it's physically there or not, gets a leaf number. And this is for the system. And it also helps us because now I can say, oh, leaf 45 through 68 won't have images associated with them. So 45 through 68, I need to not map. So I'll go here and I'll say, okay, 44. Recto and verso, move to mapping. And then 60, I said 68. So we'll say 69. So we'll grab those and shift those up. And now it should go straight from 44 through to 69. Um, so there are also a couple of places where I rearranged the um, the leaves because there were choirs that are now apart and now they're together. So we're also going to have to deal with that. But I'm going to go ahead and move all of this, move all of these to mapping. And this should I'm 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 doing this really because I want to make sure that the number is right, that I have the right number of images and. Um, and, and leaves that, that, that it's the same number. Because if I upload these and the number is different, it either means I haven't um, figured it correctly in my diagram or I haven't uploaded all of the image files that I need. Um, but oopsie, I could submit this right now if I wanted to, I've got the right number. So all I have to do now is move some things around. Um, I'm gonna see. I'm going to open another VC editor and hope this doesn't, I hope this doesn't break anything. Oh, that would be bad. Um, so I'm going to open the reconstruction here as well, because I want to see how I need to move these around. So one through four is fine. So one, two, three, four is fine. I'm also going to have to be taking a look at the other, um, the open, because what's going to happen is I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five recto. But now, what is leaf six in my diagram? It's just the six leaf down, is not actually six, full, is, is not folio six because of the reconstruction, I've had to move folio six. So folio six is now leaf eight. 
um, folio leaf six is folio nine. Um, so let's see, I think it's easier to go leaf by leaf. So we'll go with leaf six. And now we have to see which image files are folio nine, recto and verso, and then we'll move them. Um, so folio nine, the easiest way is to come back to open and say folio, where are we? Folio nine, recto is 22, verso is 23. So, um, 22 and 23 is going to be leaf six. 22, where's 22? So here's 22. And if I click this little arrow, see it moves. I like to highlight it first because it's easier to see it moving. You don't have to do that, but it's a lot easier to, to see it move. So six recto is 22 and six verso is 23. Six verso is 23. All right, so that's our first, our first one there. And then we'll go to seven. Seven is 10, which should be 24 and 25. So let's see. So we'll go back here. So seven will be 24 and 25. Um, seven recto, 24. And verso is 25. All right. Leaf eight and nine are six and seven. Leaf eight and nine are six and seven. So six is um, 16, 17. So it'll be 16, 17, 18, and 19 for eight and nine. 16. Oh, and look at that. It's because I moved those over. We've got 16, 17, 18, and 19. So we don't even have to move those. That is pretty neat. Um, but leaf 10, leaf 10 is going to be 11. So 10 is 11 and 11 is 12. Um, 10 is 11. Uh, oops, here we go. 10 is going to be 11. 11. So 26 and 27. 26 and 27. I've never tried moving two at once. I don't know if this will work. Nope, it doesn't. It just does that. Okay. 10. And then this gets moved up to 20, 26, 27. And then this should be 28. I'm going to double check. It should be 28 and 29 because the next one is leaf, that is leaf 11 is 12. So that will be 28 and 29. Oh, see, I forgot to highlight it. That makes it so much easier to see 29. And then 20 and 21 should be eight recto and verso, and we'll just double check. Um, eight recto and verso. 21, 20 and 21. Wait, did I get that right? 20, tw 20, 20 and 21 is eight. And so we have now successfully reconfigured um, the, the image files um, for that. And then we can do the same thing at the end. Uh, let's see. We have 77 is going to be 61 recto and verso. 77 is going to be 61. 
come on. 61. So 61 recto inverso is 126 and 127. For 77, 126 and 127. 126. So this is going to be moving quite a bit. And this is 77, I said. 77 recto. I have requested a drag and drop feature because I think that would be preferable to this um, arrows. But so far, I don't have one. But we do have a feedback. I see that there are a couple of comments. I will I will check I will check that as soon as I have moved finished moving this. I'm just afraid of getting I'm so easily distracted. I'm afraid of getting distracted and then messing up. All right. So oh, what just happened? There we go. There we go. All right. Now I'm checking chat. Um Innocent asked if there are limits to the amount of image data that can be uploaded to VC editor. Um, I haven't heard. So I would say upload what you need. And if you run into trouble, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, I think at this point, it's not, it, ha it hasn't been a, an issue. It's an issue when we make it an issue. It's not at, at, at this point. I, I honestly don't know how much storage, uh, how much storage we have and that kind of thing. Okay. So that was um, 61. Okay. And then 62. So 62 is going to be 28 and 29. Um, so we'll take 28 and 29, and this is going to go up to 78. Doop. I'm trying to get through this because I actually have something really fun that I, that I want to try. Um, and I'm hoping that we can get to it. So there's 78 and 129 is going to be 78 verso. Let's see. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, 128 and 129. So the next one is it's going to be right 53 then through 60. Um, and 53, sorry, I got to go back to open. Hopefully it won't do that again. Let's see, 53 is 110 and 111, and that should be what's there right now. Um, 110 and 111 is exactly what, what's there now. So 79, so it's leaf 79 through 86, 79 through 86, 86, 124, and I think 87 recto, 87 recto, rather eight, leaf 87 is 63 recto and verso. So now we'll go to 63 recto and verso, and that should be 130 and 131, which if I am not mistaken, is what's already there. So just moving those, those two leaves up um, before gave us the order that we need. So this is, if our calculations were correct, that should all be correct. And now I, I will submit the mapping. There we go. And it says you're good. And so if we come back, we can click on leaves and we'll and we'll see them there and again because we don't we don't have by fully of you it's not quite as striking as it could be but now these leaves are in um are in the sort of what i think of as the original or the 11th century order um there so so that's been so you can see that depending on how your image files are named it's a little bit more complicated to um to do that sort of lining up and mapping. Um, but with manifests, it is a lot easier, but not everything is available in a manifest. Uh, so before I move on to the next 
uh, the next bit. Are there any any questions that haven't already been asked? All right. I'll keep the chat open while I while I move to the next thing. This is just something I, I, I if you were on Twitter yesterday. Um, you might have seen this thread where I was like, I'm just going to take parts from a bunch of different manuscripts and 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 sort of make, I called it my ideal book of hours. Um, and the reason that I was doing this one, it was immensely fun and satisfying, I have to say, and I have a whole new, I, I can't say that I have a respect for Otto Ege, but like the sort of power of like taking bits and pieces and cutting them apart, even virtually, was was really great. So what I did is I built this um, compiled book of hours. Um, for all right, so there's a quick question from Megan. For people who are starting on a digital project, would you advocate that the image naming reflects collation? Um, I am actually a proponent of image files being named um, systematically, but sort of randomly. So I am, even though it makes it a little bit difficult. I'm a fan of the open sort of naming convention, which uh, is essentially is a project number. So 0241 is the number, the project number for LJS 101. And then the numbers are just numbered sequentially. Um, I think it can be, although it's, it can seem like it's easier to name them um, I think if you're talking about like your, you know, how you're storing them, I think it's a good idea to not, to not give them names that are too descriptive. Um, but then changing names. So if you have to change the name for a project, then I think that that's fine. And that might actually be something to think about, right? You might, as part of your work process um, for um, using VC Editor, or really for using any other uh, software, you know, you might change the names of the files first and then load them in but i wouldn't i wouldn't actually store them that way but that's my maybe my library science training there okay um so i compiled this and what i thought i would do i don't know if we'll have time to do all of it was then upload different sections for this because one of the things that you can do so we've we've looked at using a manifest and we've looked at uploading images but you can actually combine them together. You can come, you know, bring in um, images from a lot of different sources. So, um, so we'll see how far we get. So here's a com our compiled book of hours, our first section, I just basically used, I, if you don't know about books of hours, books of hours, were very popular, especially in the sort of um, 50 in the 15th century in particular, but also before and after, and they were, they were prayer books that emulated the um, monastic hours, but they were made to be used sort of at home. Um, and so the people who own them, they tend to be beautiful, although not all of them are. People who own them tend to have money, so they were also sort of a status symbol. Um, and they tend to have the same sorts of content. So I use the very general sort of most basic uh, contents list. And they often start with a calendar, uh, calendar not in the sense of sort of a modern calendar, but a calendar being um, sort of a list of, it's a list of saints days. So you know who to pray to on particular days. Um, and FLP Widener 7 is a very nice book of hours from the, um, from the Free Library of Philadelphia. So this is one that was uh, digitized through the Bibliophily Project. And like um, uh, a lot of the, uh, every other pen manuscript, that's in open uh, isn't in Calenda. So there's no, there's no triple IF manifest for this. So I am just going to uh, come here and I'm gonna say, just make sure that it's picking the, these up and indeed it is. This is Widener seven, Widener seven and we'll download. And then I am going to, I only want the calendar and the calendar is uh it's going to be folios one through 12 very typical uh you have one leaf for each month so one through 12 is going to be six through 
six through 29. So I'm coming back here and I'm gonna to go to my images and I'm gonna start uploading here. So my downloads, I now have Widener one and I said six through 29, six through 29, open, upload. I will wait a minute and then I'm gonna map one through 12. 12 and 6 through 29. Move to mapping. I have the right number so I can submit my mapping. And there we go. So when I come back here, our calendar now has, has the leaves attached. There we go. So we've got a gorgeous little calendar. How nice. Okay, next, Hours of the Virgin. Hours of the Virgin is FLP Lewis E93. This is another open manuscript that is not in Calenda because it's a free library of Philadelphia manuscript. So again, I'm gonna down them all. I love, I can't tell you how much I love down them all. It's so good. Uh, what did I say? It's LJS 93, not LJS, FLP Lewis E. Oop, e already forgotten the shelf mark 93 Oop. Lewis E 93 and then we download that and in a moment I don't know if you can hear it but it dings when the images are all downloaded yep little ding all right so now I, I need the hours of the virgin so the hours of the virgin one of the great things about our met metadata is we have all of the table of contents here. So the hours of the Virgin is going to be 45 recto through, it'll be 45 through 104, 45, 100, and 104 verso, 100 through, <laughs> 100 through 219. So that's pretty long. Um, 100 through 219. Here we go. Images. Okay, so now we're going to be uploading more images to our uploaded images collection. So I should have, I'm going to have to go back and Get those numbers again because I've already 100 through 219. Um, so to make this a little easier, I'm just going to upload 100 through 219. 100 through 219. There we go. And we'll upload those. And it'll take a little bit because there's quite a quite a few image files. There we go. And now they're part of this uploaded images collection. So we go to map images and let's see what are, oh, I didn't even look at that. So the hours of the Virgin are from leaf 13, leaf 13 through leaf 72. Leaf 13 through 72, 13 through 72, move to mapping. And 100, it just shows up here. There's not another, there's not another image collection. It doesn't create a new collection to 219. All right, move to mapping and hopefully, yes, we've got the right number because we have the submit mapping button here. Um, let's see. So what's, oop, what's next? We have our calendar. We have our hours of the Virgin. And then we have gospels. Gospels are from the library company of Philadelphia. It's a little manuscript. Um, let's see, library company, gospels. It's not as pretty as the other ones, but I still like it. Gospel Lessons is just 12 
um, through 18 recto. 12 through 18 recto. So we haven't done this before. We're not going to take the verso because the verso is something else. We're just going to take the recto and leave the verso kind of blank. Um, let's see, 12, I said 12 through, uh, I've already forgotten. 12, so 32 through 18 recto, 32 through 44. So I'm going to down them all. And I am going to, let me call this um, uh, it's the library LCP 12 C1, because there's also a volume two download. There we go. And oh, I've already forgotten. <laughs> Too many numbers. Um, through 44, whatever it was through 44. 32 through 44, okay. 32 through 44. So we go back to manage images and we just upload them. Library company 12, 32 through 44 open, upload. All right, and then we map. And remember, we're only doing the, um, so let's go back to the collation to take a look. We're only doing the verso of, and I even, I even tagged it this way. Oop, if you see here, Recto is got the R here means recto. So I'm, I'm even in my diagram, I'm saying the gospels are only on the front of this and I'm not saying what's on the back. So it's 73 through 79 recto. Um, images. Wait a minute. I'm confused. What just, why is that? Why is this leaf 13? Oh, cause the, I feel like, didn't we already do that? And I submitted it. Ah, uh, something happened because that's only, okay, Hours of the Virgin, 13, 13 through 72. Maybe I did forget to hit upload, 13 through 72. Through 72, that's what will happen if you forget to hit the submit mapping, it will just forget. Um, 13 through 72, and then 100 through, oop, 219. There we go. Move to mapping. So now I am going to submit mapping. There we go. So that's done. And then um, 73. Here we go, 73 through 79 recto. 73 through 79 recto, move to mapping. And 32 through 44, move to mapping. There we go, and now we submit, can't forget. All right, so now that's great. And, but now we've got 79 kind of hanging out because there's not, and we're gonna get more of them as we, as we um, move forward, so. Go back to the collation safely, knowing that it's not going to delete anything. And now we have hours of the cross. Um, I'm actually going to, you know, what I'm going to be, I'm going to be weird, and I'm going to switch it because I do have a couple here. Here we go. Where are you? I used a couple of pen manuscripts because I did want to show you that you can you can mix. We've been downloading images and uploading images, but you can also use manifests here. So UPen MS Codex. Uh, 1056 is in Calenda. So we can, here it is, 1056. So we want to use the um, manifest here instead. So I will take that and we'll import it first and then we'll think about where we're gonna, where we're gonna put these images. Um, so we go to images, manage images. And then when I 
when I put this in, I get it as a separate, um, as its own sort of thing because it has all of the information associated with it. So now let's go back to the collation and find that choir. Owen Timorata, it's only four leaves, uh, 120 through 123 is the leaf number for my diagram, 120 through 123. However, that is not what it is in um, this, in, um, in the manuscript. So we need to find out what the leaf's uh, what the leaf numbers are for Owen Tamarata in this manuscript. And this information is not in Colenda, but we have this full catalog record. And I, my fingers are crossed that it's here because it often is here. Here we go. So here we have um, the content. So if you're like us and your manuscript is actually in several different places, you may have to look around to find the information that you want. But here's Owen Tamarata. It's 120, or sorry, 21 recto through 24 recto. Uh, and so 120 through 123, uh, oop, map images. So now I'm going to scroll down to find 120. 120, come on. 120 to 123. I think it was recto. Uh, there we go. So I'll move that to mapping. So we're sort of doing it in the middle. And you can do them out of order like this. As long as you have the right leaves associated with images, um, the order I don't think matters so much on the left side. It's the order on the right side that, that matters. Uh, and then 21 through 24 recto. So here we can see, I, cl I just clicked on this and you can see that the um, that's there. And because it, we brought it in from a manifest, it, it brought along the information with it. So 21 through 23 recto, there's something else on 23 verso. Um, why does that not? 20. Oh, I think this is wrong. 23. There we go. That's not right. There. 20 through 20, 21, 22 recto. What is this? 20. All right. I'm going to go back quickly and look at the collation because I feel like I did something wrong. 20 through 23. Recto, 20 through 23 recto, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, that should be right. 20 through 20, 120. And so, cause I didn't, I didn't uh, change it here. It just took away everything I moved. So I have to do this again. 120 through 123. So it's a little fiddly, uh, recto. Recto, 120 through 123, and then books of hours, 21 through 24. Recto, move to mapping, please. There we go. I don't know what I did first time, but there we go. So the submit mapping. So now there's a whole bunch of choirs where we haven't. Um, associated images because we ran out of time. I'll probably do that on my own. Um, but we have them here and um, also here. There we go. So there's there's our image files from, from the manifest. So you can mix and match. You could have multiple manifests. If we'd had time, I would have also, and I, I will do it later, uploaded another manifest. Um, and so it's possible to sort of use a lot of different ones, which is great if you're doing what I'm doing, uh, which is sort of making your own virtual copy using a bunch of things, or if you're doing fragmentology, which I think is probably the more usual um, way of doing that. It, that is if you are reconstructing a manuscript that was taken apart and you are bringing in images um, from all over, like Lisa Fagan Davis does um, has 
pretty notable for doing work like that. Um, so that's just been an hour. <laughs> um, if there are any questions, I'm I'm happy to answer them. I hope I hope this was um, useful, though. And yeah, great. Thank you. Um, so next we're, next week's workshop is our last one, and it's going to be specifically about building um, projects from collation formulas. So using existing information instead of going from the source, which brings up all, all kinds of, of problems of its own. So I'm, I'm happy to have a whole workshop dedicated to that. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm, this is being recorded and it's gonna be posted on YouTube um, in a couple of days probably. And I, I hope that I will see you all again soon. Take care follow up to that workshop there was something that i said i was going to show that i didn't get to in the workshop and so i'm doing it now to add to the recording and that is the html export that shows the bifolia view and i feel like this is a really important thing that that viscall enables and that vc editor um, could allow so if you look over here in the left hand uh, menu which is visible sort of on every page um, there's this export section and there's a lot of different exports so you can export the um, the actual data um, in either JSON format or viscall XML which is sort of our native um, our native format you can also export diagrams only either in SVG or PNG you can export formulas honestly that doesn't work very well right now but I'm writing new scripts that will be much better and then there's HTML basically um, all you have to do is click the HTML page and it will think for a moment while it chugs along behind the scenes and then from here you can download the XML um, so we'll save it into the downloads folder and then open it up and here we have the files and then you can see there's actually uh, a few uh, different supporting files. It comes with the SVG because the SVG is what's used in the HTML. And then there are different, um, different formats that show up here. I'm actually not going to open this because it, the image size of uh, LJS 101 is strange. It's um, a little bit square. I don't know if you've noticed, but as, as we've looked at it, but it's more square than other ones. And so um, this is what it looks like when you open it up. So here we have choir one and it's one and four, which is folios one and four, which are conjoined in the manuscript. And then um, so here's one verso and four recto. And then it's like you take the sheet, you you pulled the sheet out of the manuscript and you flip it over and then you have um, nine verso, uh, sorry, four verso and one recto and then so on. So you're moving inside the choir. So you start with the outer bifolia and you're moving in. You have two and three, uh, five and eight, and then six and seven. And six and seven is interesting because of course, this is actually what you, this is the middle of the choir six verso and seven recto so this is an opening that you actually see when you're looking at the book the other ones are sort of constructed out of it um so that's it's pretty neat one thing that this is really helpful with um is we talked in one of the earlier um uh one of the earlier uh workshops about how hair and flesh how when you see because hair faces hair and flesh faces flesh and if that changes that's weird things happening this can help too so if you if you draw your if you do your diagram and you attach your images and then you load this up and you have places where you have you know flesh saying it's attached to hair you know that there's something wrong uh, in this case this is nice we can see that here we know that this is flesh because it's sort of this creamy colored in comparison with this sort of darker and then here we have the slightly darker of the hair and the cream of the flesh and it goes on like that um, except then here you can see it, there's a pattern you have flesh and hair and hair and flesh because that's how manuscripts are put together with hair facing hair and flesh facing flesh and so when we get to this point 
where we have hair, flesh, and then we have hair again, you see this also when you're turning the pages of a manuscript. It's just a sort of a different way way to see that. So you can say, oh, there's something going on here. And what's going on here is that the, one of the, um, you know, the, the choirs have been sort of um, messed up a little bit. So that's pretty neat. Um, you can also, if you click on it, it will pop up a view. And also this is, it looks strange because again, because the image files of LJS 101 are a little bit, a little bit square, um, but you click on it and it flips over and there you go. And it also, it shows down here what, what leaves there are. So you get a better view and you can see also very clearly that this is, this is sort of um, compiled together um, from different, like this is not the facing page because it's, you would be able to see the queue, you know, the queue over here, if it was. All right, so that is the main view. Let's see, there's a couple of other views. There's just the diagrams. So if you only want the diagrams, um, you can use that one or um, formulas I won't open because it's not great. So uh, that is the HTML export potentially uh, pretty useful until we, I mean, it's useful now. You can take that and you can embed it in your, um, in your web page, which might be pretty neat. Um, but we're also hoping to get that bifolia view in VC editor sometime pretty soon.